be showing you how to make a simple homemade volcano by using simple vinegar with baking soda. Both of these found at home. Uh, so basically we're going to pour the vinegar into the baking soda and it's going to release carbon dioxide. The vinegar, which is a acid, will neutralize the baking soda, which is a base, creating carbon dioxide bubbles looking like an eruption. Are you ready? Ready. Here we go. There the caustic acid is now spilling over my assistant's hands. And there you have it. Today we're going to teach you how to make flash paper. Uh, what is that? Used in many magic shows. Oh. It's made from common acetone and gun cotton. Gun cotton was invented before they used black powder in rifles. It's extremely flammable. Like that. Once you mix the two together, you get this mixture. All you do is simply pour the mixture out and let it dry. Once it's dry, you have flash paper. I'll show you an example. It burns without a trace. And there you have it. Energy may be stored in many ways, some which might surprise you. Some obvious forms of stored energy may be like something like rocket fuel. For instance, rocket fuel burns. But ordinary household things, like your coffee creamer, also contain large amounts of energy. For instance, this is common household coffee mate. While the energy isn't stored in something explosive, it's stored in regular flour. But it will still burn just the same as rocket fuel, as you can see. So think of that next time you have a cup of coffee. Today we're going to show you how to change the color of a flame using simple chemicals. Note the flame in the blowtorch is burning blue. That's because it's only burning propane. We're going to introduce some copper carbonate and see what happens. Notice the flame takes on a green tinge. That's because as the copper is burning, the energy from the blowtorch is elevating the electrons to a higher energy level, emitting a photon of light, in this case a green photon. Next chemical. We introduce some sodium oxalate into the flame and see what happens. Note the flame changes to an orangey, orangey glow. This is because, once again, the electrons are changing to a different energy level, releasing a photon of light. Now we're going to demonstrate a basic potato cannon. Using a simple fuel such as calcium carbide and a potato as a rocket, we will launch this potato into the atmosphere. Simply adding this mixture to water will create acetylene gas. This top part will make a spark. This spark will ignite the gas and propel the potato through the barrel into the projectile. That made no sense. The first step is to take an ordinary potato and to ram it into the barrel. I have my potato. I'm going to push down on it. Cutting it into the barrel. You can see the potato is perfectly in the barrel. Next, I will jam it down into the barrel with the ramrod, like a broomstick. Now the potato is ready. I start ready my launcher by adding water into the chamber, followed by my calcium carbide mixture. There's the water. Now some good old calcium carbide. Put it in brown sugar. <laughs> now we're ready for launch. We're going to show you how a normal fluid under room temperature will not boil, but under vacuum it will. So here we have our fluid in our flask and we're going to introduce it to vacuum. As you can see, the reduced pressure causes the fluid to boil. But normally this would not happen. Magnets are incredible! Dealing with all sorts of polarities of north and south, you would not believe. In this experiment, magnet that we just put into the water is controlled by a magnet attached to a motor underneath the glass. The magnetic field is controlled via 
motor and electricity, and it spins a smaller magnet. Isn't science fun? Thank <laughs> you.